very much. Thank you for still being here. You had your chance to run away, so now you have to see that 3,000 slides. Um, yeah, it's actually an additional challenge because my monitor is black, so please bear with me when I turn myself. Um, yeah, so maybe some of you have read our reports. So first things first, uh, this was a team effort. This was not solely me researching on that device. And to be honest, it was uh, scarily easy. Um, Christoph Wolf was involved in quite a lot of things. And at the end, uh, releasing report, uh, no matter how small it is, it takes quite a lot of time. The report contrails, uh, contains all the details. I can only skim through and bring you hopefully some funny... Uh, now I have the picture. Okay. Magic. So uh, tooling will be public after my vacation, so in two weeks, I guess. Uh, but as we will see, the tooling is not that fancy, and you might be able to do your own tools. So this talk in one slide is basically how many times can you shoot yourself into the foot? They said, yeah! And uh, to be honest, it's really more about showing that... Um, it's a good thing to know that you need security, but the implementation is key. And this is really what we um, experienced during that whole phase. And, well, it was actually a customer coming to us, telling us, well, listen, I have that cute little device, and it's so nice, and I, I want to use that in my company, but, you know, the paranoids... The security team, they want to have a security review and unfortunately they choose your company to do um, the investigation. So yes, we took that challenge. We um, had two devices there. And uh, to be honest, I mean, it's only a video camera and the keyboard and it has to be secure and it's running Android, so it has to be secure. Meet the owls. Um, we investigated the Meeting Owl Pro, that's the one there, and the Meeting Owl, that's the uh, Whiteboard Owl or something like that is the right name. There is a Meeting HQ, which is basically a dock for that owl, and there is Meeting Owl 3, I didn't see that so far. So those are the tools. Basically, the Meeting Owl uh, for the Whiteboard is a subscription service, and it wasn't available in Europe, so it was quite hard to get the subscription for the US-only service, because otherwise we couldn't see and find all the different vulnerabilities. So basically, when we received the device, we, we uh, used the test system, connected it to it, and experienced a webcam, as expected, and a USB keyboard, which is quite funny. I mean, I was like, whoa, why a keyboard? Yeah, okay, the button is basically a keyboard where you can make it louder or, or, or uh, you can uh, increase or decrease the, uh, the, the volume at the end. So um, next, we thought, well, that's nice, but uh, yeah, the rest of the logic is inside of the device. It doesn't have to be that bad, right? So we did what every good and highly skilled uh, Hacker did, uh, would do. We uh, didn't read the manual. We uh, did go to YouTube and check some videos. We found out that um, there is an app, surprise, and it's using Bluetooth. Um, there is something like a service where companies can manage their hours and see how many minutes were talked on each end how many owls they have, where they're located. So basically some stats. And there seems to be, according to one video, there seems to be an update uh, mechanism from the app without having the owl being connected to the internet. And you can connect multiple owls. If you have a large um, university, you can connect multiple of them into one room, a better audio quality, better video feed. So... That's basically what is out there. So the rough procedure was, we take a look at the camera, uh, at the application, we downloaded the updates, we sniffed the different wireless protocols and communication, 
we were checking what is going on on Bluetooth, but um, actually we didn't play around too much with the hardware itself because it was quite nicely built and it wasn't needed. We implemented a custom Bluetooth client and a small MQTT client, which was quite fun, but not that difficult. So just to give you a, a rough overview, I don't go into every detail, but the system was way more complex than expected in the beginning. So it wasn't just a webcam and a keyboard. There is a whole infrastructure from an AWS MQTT implementation. There is an interprocess uh, service running on each owl, which takes basically commands and distribute it to different services. There is an app, there is Bluetooth, there's Wi-Fi, quite, Wi -Fi, quite a lot of different um, attack vectors at the end. So, first thing first, we again took the companion app. What can that app do? Well, it uses Bluetooth. I have to enable it. It talks to the owls. It allows you to control the camera. It allows you to, con uh, to combine multiple owls, as I said. You can configure it, set up the Wi-Fi. You can protect your configuration so that another student can just uh, modify the camera and switches ang angles or changes the Wi-Fi configuration. And in Siri, you can update your owl. So Bluetooth, well, in fact, they're using just works because they don't have capabilities. You don't have to push any buttons. There is no time limitation. The only limitation is that only one person could pair and communicate at the time, but everyone can pair with whatever owl there is in the nearby. The serial number, remember that, is basically the name that they are broadcasting from. And Basically, they use Bluetooth LE with a JSON-like data structure in there. And these were basically also the commands sent. So we took a look at the application. We found other commands like you can make it do something like hoo hoo, or you can blink the eyes. You can get all the configuration detail, again, without any authentication, just pair with it. You can send custom commands, which will be handed to the interprocess communication service, which will do the rest for you. You can uh, get a randomly generated authentication required to connect to the internal web service, which is only available when Wi-Fi is on, and uh, you have to, uh, the correct token, and this is generated during every reboot. But Again, there is a command to get the authentication token. So let's look at that passcode that I just meant to uh, mention to uh, protection the configuration. So we recognized, oh, well, the application has something like a passcode. I cannot change the configuration anymore. We took a look what happens on the code and the uh, Bluetooth communication and recognized, yes, it seems to send a SHA-1 representation of that passcode to the owl. At least we thought it works like that, but at the end it's like, it's just a client-side uh, implementation. So yes, the SHA-1 is stored on the owl, but the verification if the user can change the uh, settings is done in the app. So, uh, yeah, with any other client, you can simply just get the configuration anyway or change it. Or uh, we recognize that there was a, a, a parameter reset equals zero in the, uh, in the message sent. And we thought, well, what might be the reason? And let's set that to one. And that's exactly what you need to send to just remove the passcode, which is anyway obsolete. I thought, well, maybe there's not a chance. I wrote a nice email. Oh, I forgot my passcode. Can you help me? And I said, yes, there is the attach. You put it in there on the passcode field. And we were like, that's strange. We test, uh, we, we took some, uh, some tries. And at the end, it was uh, the device serial as a show one is the backdoor hash allowing you to bypass the 
Pascot again. And again, this is the name of the, uh, uh, basically the name in the Bluetooth parameter. So, I don't know. But in fact, you can just char whatever you want and send it as a new passcode without the old password code. So, yes, they need security, but uh, yeah, the implementation is important. Let's switch over to Wi-Fi. Uh, this is the most important uh, finding, let's call it like that. Um, the OWL uses the Wi-Fi to call home, provides statistics, and connects to an MQTT network, which is hosted on AWS, and they have mutual TLS, so they know they need security, they know they need to encrypt that. Great, but let's see what they did wrong. Well, we recognize that there is a command called 150, which is basically enabling an access point mode, which is there that the application can load a new Android version onto the OWL with that authentication token, which is randomly generated on each reboot, and you can request over Bluetooth without authentication. So it's basically unprotected. And the funny thing was, at the end, this access point mode is basically tethering. So if you connected your meeting owl to your corporate network, anyone within the reach of the a Bluetooth proximity can just enable that mode. The owl span, uh, spawns an additional Wi-Fi network with meeting owl underscore uh, serial number as the name and the hardcoded PSK hoot hoot. So yes, we have tethering, but Again, we had an attacker pass into the network. Well, this was shocking. And I mean, to be honest, this was not um, hard at all. So yeah, we thought, well, this might be bad. <laughs> there is, in fact, I, I, I said some, uh, there is some, some backend servers uh, getting the statistics. And by using a very simple uh, API and some credential that you will find in the application and the serial number, you can get all the different details from every owl in their whole ecosystems. We uh, just took two or three that we were aware of and removed some bytes and just brute force basically some serials and this is the outcome so we had exact locations owner names configurations statistic data from all the owls so this was a problem so we we thought well maybe we just don't publish that information because everyone can now sell tethering access into the owls companies because i know where they are and the names of the companies are in there and so we thought, well, what's the last thing to do? Let's take a look at the MQTT. So the device subscribes itself to that channel. If you have a whiteboard service, we will see there is some specific messages that uh, the owls get, but in general, they subscribe and they can get commands, but very limited subset. So... What is required to join that MQTT? MQTT is pretty standard. So yes, it's, I said it already, mutual TLS. So you need a certificate. Every client needs a certificate. So what is needed? The hardware serial number of the OWL, the Wi-Fi MAC address of the OWL, the software version, which is extremely easy to guess because you can just ask. Um, you need the API URL and some creds you get from the app. You need some Python magic, which is basically an HMAC uh, over some already known parameters and just another test parameter as a secret. That's really the content of that secret. And then send a request to a specific URL. And you get something, uh, 
No, you get a certificate. I will show it later. But where did you get that information from? Well, again, we used our high-tech know-how and we used uh, just Google uh, image search and you will find a screenshot. And in that screenshot, you have a serial number, you have a hardware serial number, you have a MAC address, you have everything what you need. If that's not enough, you can go to YouTube again. Or, I was like, what the hell is going on? Obviously, we were looking at the website and seeing what is there. And in some random JavaScript files at the end, there was a JSON blob, which is basically a complete list of some test devices from a company which does the development there. And those are valid numbers, or at least they were valid numbers. That JavaScript is still there, and that's exactly how the data looked that we got from there. So you have exact exact numbers on on uh, the location, but we had it for a multiple thousand. So that's the certificate you get. As you can see from the date, still works. And I don't know, it's real confident if you think that product is still there in 28 years, but uh, yeah. So this is the requirement that you need to join the MQTT conversation. MQTT is basically you subscribe to something and you get messages in that channel. If you use the star, the asterisk, you get all the messages. So what not? Well, to be honest, there wasn't not much going on, which was very interesting. Obviously, you get some information. From time to time, you see some more stats. But if you have anyone in there using that whiteboard feature, you get something like a URL. And the secret, which is uh, generated, and if you open that and enter the credentials, you get somebody's whiteboard that he is recording because they want to share it with other parties. But the problem is every owl registered to that service can read those and just connect, and they know the secret. So we were on to some whiteboard watching. There are more interesting whiteboards and less interesting whiteboards, and sometimes you have developers scratching heads or putting fingers in whatnot. Uh, but obviously, this was a problem, and they recognized it, so all the old Shatterhand uh, shoot that service, so it's it's down now. But um, yeah, they have to find a way how to enable that because I paid for that service. So last but not least, a bit about the, the timeline. It was a complete denial in the beginning. Uh, then we thought, well, 6,000 devices or something like that, and having... Uh, the exact location uh, from governments to companies, whatnot, might be an issue. So we we uh, involved quite a lot of uh, different helpful people, but only after publishing really the information, uh, they were hyper reactive. So they took security very seriously now, and. To be honest, they started now with uh, applying some fixes and they wanted to uh, get in conversation with us. Uh, they also offered us money, but we uh, strictly do not uh, take bounties as a company. So it, it took quite a while. Fixes, whiteboard services down, RESTful API is not fixed, it's just redacted, so now you have XXX in there instead of the real values. The tethering mode is switched off, that's correct. No one um, knows if there is a downgrade procedure or whatnot, but uh, I don't see that all the things are properly fixed, but it might just take some time, but at least the tethering is switched off. Open topics, I'll connect, 
two owls meeting together, they need to blink to each other, which might be an out-of-band out authentication for Bluetooth. So if you can join the owl, you get basically an audio channel into the conversation, so it might be interesting. Uh, I am already over time, right? Um, hints regarding uh, Bluetooth headset bearing was in the code, which is also interesting because if you can do that, again, you get the conversation. We didn't look at OJA procedures, Android or bootloaders because it was so simple. We didn't, in, we didn't even start with the native ARM binaries because it wasn't needed. And I think that downgrade, uh, downgrading might be a, a real problem. The, and the most in, interesting thing to research might be there is a piece of code which at least hints that there is a possibility to send any command over MQTT if you have QA in your build flag of your Android build. Hopefully there is never a name with QA in it. So let's see. So there's a lot of, a uh, lot of room to play with. So feel free to continue that work. Final words. Just knowing that one needs security and use a standard whatever is not enough. The implementation counts and the implementation is key. And that's really, that talk was really about just how many times can you implement security and bypasses your own security over and over again. So I'm open to questions, happy to share whatever I have. Um, I'm here later on as well. So hopefully this was a nice experience for you as well. And yeah, thank you. Thank you.